see me off the shop. Shop? Ship. Ship shop. That was pretty quick as well, getting off. No issues. And this is Haugesund. Haugesund Harbour. Morning. Morning. Two or one. Two or one. Thank you very much. Two or one. Two of them. Mm. Find out which one's the quietest. Well, there's number two. A few moments later. Yeah. Welcome again to Haugesund. Uh, and this island we're on now is, is Ries, eh? It's one of the few islands that sort of protects the mainland from the from the sea. The city center is on the on the mainland and the Ries, eh? It's one of the biggest of the three, four islands that sort of are just outside the city center of Haugesund. So the, build, the building we see in front is a, a shipyard or it used to be a shipyard, now there are more works for the oil production and the gas and the windmill production in the North Sea. The present company which is yeah, occupying this premises now is yeah. called Able. It's a big international company. But during the very start when it was a shipyard in 1901, it's been a lot of different companies since then. Uh, the blue building is sort of a landmark for Harrison. It's been here for many, many decades, though not from the very start in 1901. <coughs> so this island is very industrialized, but on the other side, the one that's facing the city center, there are more private houses. And right in front, which is be on the other side of the strait, is the is the main, the big church in town. You can see that. So we are going uh, now to cross the bridge and coming into the city centre. We're going to just drive through it. We're going to pass the city hall and then uh, drive south out of the town and towards the island uh, uh, Karme. And on the southernmost tip of Karme is Skudnes home situated. So approximately one hour drive now. And this bridge uh, came up in 1939. So on uh, the right hand side you see the biggest hotel in town, the Quality Maritime Hotel, and to the right we can see the Inner Harbour, uh, where there's a lot of restaurants and bars and nightclubs. So it's quiet now in the early morning, of course, on a Thursday, but in the, in the evenings, especially during summertime, it's quite crowded. So the population here in Hagerson today is around 37,000 people. It's not a very big town in uh, in, Norwegian, in Norway, uh, but it's quite uh, quite busy, quite a uh, lot of things happening here, both with work and other activities. And um, with the surrounding municipalities so that's uh, close to the to the town here, we talk about around 100,000 people who live in this area. And the main street in Halbysund is this one we cross now, quiet now, it is a pedestrian area, very large part of it, it's called Haraldsgata and it's named after the first king of Norway, Harald I, or his name is more more known as Harald Fairhair. Uh, long hair he had, he grew, grew it for 10 years when he was unifying Norway in a long process that took him 10 years when 29 regions in Norway uh, became one nation called Norway. So this is the end of Haraldsgata and we will move over to Salmusvayen uh, uh, which is uh, an old name uh, for shelter and we think that it is called shelter this road because on the other side of the water here we find Karme Island and we think also it's called shelter because we know that this pilgrim route came up along the strait here on the, on the land and also by boat. The pilgrims they were going up 
to Trondheim in the Middle Age, to Nidaros as it's called in those days, uh, where uh, King uh, Olav uh, was buried. He was sanctified after his death in 1030. And we usually say that he was the last of the king that tried to Christian Norway, finishing the process with Christian Norway. It took, took a long time. Uh, it was a, a long road from the first uh, knowledges of Christianity from the Vikings who sailed abroad until the end it was more or less forced upon the people heading Norway. Uh, to the left we see some gardens and built big old big houses and this is where the ship owners settled when they grew richer. They wanted to get out of the city centre which in its time must have been quite dirty and noisy. Uh, especially in the, in the winter time dirty everything. So uh, they moved and built houses and gardens here in this area south of the of the town. And to the right here you see a white cross, a big high white cross. And in front of this cross is our uh, 44 graves. And these are what we call the Commonwealth graves. Uh, they are uh, the pilots who were shot down here during the Second World War. Uh, they were trying to destroy the German military installations along the coastline here and were shot down. The young men sacrificed their lives here in Norway. Uh, the average age would have been, I had a look at the graves, and they were around 24, 25 years. 20 minutes later. So we're crossing over this bridge. Um, over to Karme Island, which is a big island, a relatively big island in Norway, but it is the most populated island in Norway. Uh, so around in this municipality, we talk about around 42,000 inhabitants uh, in the, on the island and on the mainland too. And now to the right, when you come on top of the bridge, you can see Iona to the right. They have recently also discovered or excavated uh, a big wall and, uh, and so what, what they think has been a major palace in the same uh, time as the church around 1300s. They didn't really look for something like that, they were looking for a secret passage but they saw this long wall and they uh, decided to, to keep excavating and they were given money to do that and so they discovered this big palace that they didn't think existed so that's quite a, a surprise so it is still uh, preparing for showing for the public some of it we can see but uh, in a few years it will be like a middle-aged park where we can go into the ruins so it's this exciting uh, news for uh, for the historians and even points out that all of this has been an important area. We're coming through Okraham now which is the uh, second largest town on, on Karme around eight or nine thousand people live here. We're going just through uh, it and but uh, what is most famous for, for Okraham the beautiful beaches that are uh, just outside uh, uh, the town here is uh, the end of the road or the, or the city center here. You might get a glimpse of the long beach called the Okra Salmen. It's a popular beach all year round, not necessarily for, for swimming, but uh, to walk and get a fresh air and uh, it's also a coastal path down to a fishing port called uh, Falkingsta, where we're going to make a stop on our return today. I'll give you some in uh, information about what we're going to do today and some uh, about uh, Skudnes Town. So uh, when we come down to Skudnes Town today, we will go off 
uh, at one place uh, near the city center and then we go through uh, the new part of Skudneshavn and into the old part. Sure. It's not a very big area, uh, old Skudneshavn nor the, nor the new one. It's a small, very small town. A little over 3,000 people live in, in Skudneshavn today. And uh, uh, I'll give you the times when we meet and so on and then we're going to visit the museum. We're just going through uh, the part of the old town and to the museum. Uh, we have a time at the museum and then after you visit the museum, which you do on your own, I'll go in together with you and I'll be in the museum for questions and maybe some information, but you do get your own information in English, uh, uh, sort of your own guide to the museum. And then um, when you're finished, we, you get some time uh, on your own and we will have a meeting point and a meeting time, which I'll come back to and then we'll do some sightseeing on the way uh, to the bus again and then we're going to uh, going through the rest of the old town there's one main street in the old town which i'll show you when we get there uh, some of the houses are old uh, we see uh, we're not going just going to see the oldest houses from around 1770 uh, the museum house is also quite old, from around 1815. Uh, and uh, but the building boom uh, took part from around 1840 and onwards. Eventually. So in a minute or two we're going off the bus. So bring your things with you if you need them. You can leave things you don't need to bring with you on the bus. The bus will be looked after by Piotr and Lot. So, uh, but uh, bring what you think you need uh, when we walk, because you won't see the bus before we uh, leave the town now. Okay, we're going off here. So apparently it's pronounced Skudner sound. No. I don't trust anything you say because you were asleep for most of the time. You were not enough to swim. Uh, for like two seconds and that was it. house now is, uh, is one of the few, there's some small hotels or all nighting places here. This is one of it, the summer hotel, Lundin's. But this is not a prison or was not a prison this time. It's, it was a bakery. And uh, during the fishery, many of these uh, young or men that come take part in the fishing, they maybe were sometimes hungry, so they needed to protect the bakery from breaking. So that's why they put it on. So uh, they were probably hungry sometimes. They lived very poorly in the boats or in boat houses during the season. They put up a bathing house for them at the time so they could clean a bit in order to avoid diseases. So now it is a pub here, so it might need some protection too. <laughs> but anyway, these walls here are a little different. It's that house and this house here. And this, the old woods. This also is wood, but they're supposed to be brick. Because that had a sort of higher status. So it's, uh, they pretended to be bricks, but it's all wood.
Yeah. <laughs> this this is a sort of uh, you know, important place where people met, coming from here, here, and here, and uh, um, this is. Uh, yeah, a cafeteria. I can see it's, it's closed now. I don't know if she's open it. There's some people in there. Maybe she's open. Anyway, uh, this garden here, nice roses, small house, the dollhouse, used to be a toilet in its time. So I, I just guess that there might be some good soil that makes <laughs> the roses so nice. Anyway, we're going down there now to the museum. The, the Söragata, this main street, continues uh, to the end where we are going. If you want to, to explore and walk a bit when you're, but we meet again outside the museum, which is down there, and we're going there now. And then, since you're all listening to me now, outside the museum, in the square, we find a place along the wall. We will go together 10 minutes to 12. 11.50, we'll meet again down there. And we go to the museum now. You spend as long time as you want to be in the museum. And then you have your free time until 11.15 down there. And then we go together 15. No, 50. 11.50, 10 minutes an hour. So you have one hour and five minutes now. So, yeah. Okay, let's go to the museum. And they're all for toilets now. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Morning. 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 Yes, the no, I thought it's spoke. There's no time about it now. Yeah. The toilets will be in the third door to the right, the blue door, or through the museum on the, on the first floor here. So, in here, uh, inside? Yes, yeah, the same toilet. You can either go through the museum on the first floor or just go directly in there. But let us hear to the introduction of the museum. So, go and listen. Hello. Hello. Please go a little closer. <laughs> Welcome to Skibnes Hub. Uh, you're a bit uh, unlucky with uh, the weather, but uh, at least it's not raining. <laughs> yes. So before we enter the museum, I'm just going to give you a short introdu introduction. So these houses are some of the best kept uh, wooden houses here in Norway. This house where the museum is was built in 1818. And the shop you can see when you enter were opened in 1843. And the shelves, the floor and the disc are original. So you can feel it when you walk uh, on the floor that it's old. <laughs> and that building over there with the number 15 on it was built in 1770. And that's quite old for wooden houses here in Norway. Because here at the west coast it's a lot of wind, rain and uh, mild winters. So wooden houses tend to rot very fast. So therefore it's quite fascinating that uh, around 60% of uh, these houses have permanent residence and the rest of the houses are vacation houses. So before the museum became a museum, uh, people were living here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the last owner was a woman named Agnes Melan. And when she died, the, uh, the house was sold on an, on an auction. Uh, but rumors has it that she's still walking around. <laughs> so if you feel something you can't explain, it's probably just her. But uh, don't worry, because she's not dangerous. <laughs> so the museum is like a time capsule with uh, a lot of different exhibitions uh, that shows different lifestyles. Uh, so you will be provided with the walking guide. Um, and if you have cameras, so feel free to use your flash because it's quite dark inside. And if you want to have some coffee afterwards, you can go to the coffee shop uh, over there, around the corner. And you can drink your coffee in that garden over there. 
So enjoy. Thank you. I thought it would be arranged actually how it was originally, but they just got everything shoehorned in the building. Yeah, well, certainly, don't this is like a location of it, and little corners of things that are just separate little setups. Right? Yeah, they, yeah, they're all set up, aren't they? Like, this wouldn't have been the nursery or whatever. This part might not have been there, but, yeah. yeah. And then those rooms that had the shoemaker, the blacksmith, and the barbers all together wouldn't have been like that. No. Because this was a house, so. Yeah, exactly. So you can't get ten different buildings worth of. Into one house. Yeah, but I thought it was be set up like a house. Sword yeah, that was yeah, yeah. Can I ask you how do you actually pronounce the town name? Skudeneshaven. Skudeneshaven. Yeah, Skude is probably as I I don't know what on the map it says Skite that could, could be a sort of edge. Okay. And uh, also, we know that uh, the the scud is also sort of ship uh, with a. They have a very soft uh, language here. Okay. With, uh, uh, so, uh, but I think it's it's sort of it's the scud and it's home. Home is harbor. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's okay. a sort of edge harbor, which you should really divide the word. Oh, okay. But harbor is haven. Haven. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You can walk on it, no problem. <laughs> this shows that the, I think no. the curator wanted to see what was below here because there was water here coming. Mm -hmm. So, and it, probably they put uh, uh, you can see dirt and so on down there and it was filled up, come water in when the, when the sea comes in. Come, came in so. Okay. And he didn't want to cover it up, so he wanted to show it. But it's completely safe to walk. It might be, I'm still not walking on it though. <laughs> oh, sorry. And the last lady of the house is that Mrs. Melanie. She's on the picture on the door there uh, to the left. Oh, okay. Yeah. And this is how the, this class of people would have decorated their houses in this period of around 1800. Having nice things from abroad. Uh, there's a punch glass and a bottle they would take from Riga, or from Riga, which is a sweet alcoholic drink. And uh, tablecloths and all these things they had. To so they was quite wealthy. Then. Yes, those were people who lived in these streets here. Eventually, not not the first generation, they were, they were tradesmen, the fish, so they, they were, uh, had money. And they just uh, visited each other, so they didn't mix with the people who lived more poorly outside these streets and in, in, yeah, side streets. A few moments later. Well, it finished in the museum, did take some video of it, hopefully it was okay. 
We're just having a wander around the streets before we have to meet up with the guide again. Is it starting to spit with rain? It is starting to spit with rain, unfortunately. Just gonna go up here. There's a little crossroad. Just kind of remind me of like some Cornish towns with all like the houses on different levels like this. Yeah. Not necessarily the style of building, but. Yeah. Hmm. I suppose it's the only town that's got pillars. Yeah. It's the coffee shop. The looks of it. Don't know where we're going. <laughs> At least we're going down one road, we shouldn't get lost. Harb a bit. Thing. She was the one that confirmed like three times what time it would be back. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes later. So on the way back to the ship, we've stopped off at Fisherman's Memorial, which I believe is up here, I think she said. Yep, looks like it. And we found, I don't know whether I said it on the camera, but we were missing people when we got went had to come back to the bus. But we eventually found them. On the bus. They were on the bus. <laughs> Even though the bus wasn't where we left it, because we walked through a town. Anyway. Nice view out to sea. So it's like the Fisherman's Memorial coming up just here. people that have died at sea or fishing and the flowers are nice. This is the altar she was talking about I assume. Yeah. I assume this is the altar she was talking about. People come here to get married and stuff. Lovely view. 